Hello everyone, what's happening? Hope you're all good. It must have been about a month since the last video, so a lot of action's taken place. I said I was going to take a little break in January with these videos because I didn't think much would go on, but it's actually been the opposite. The racing's been unbelievable. I think we've seen a good few Cheltenham Festival winners this month that have ran that will go on to follow up at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, like I say, um, a lot of the action that I'll be touching on is a couple of weeks old now, so you have probably heard all about it, but I'll just give my views on it. Most importantly, sticking to some of the horses I've talked about in these videos and put up in the description. So yeah, and just like a little sad note, I don't know how bad it's going to look on these videos, but I'm sunburned to death and my skin is shedding like a snake, so just in case I look like a complete weirdo, it's, it's just sunburn. And yeah, okay, let's start cracking on. So we'll start off with the, with the Supreme horses, the Supreme picture. And I haven't put no horses up in the in these videos for the Supreme, and that's just because I've been all over Constitution Hill since his debut, and basically it was about four to one straight after his debut. I'd never even heard of the horse, and I just I hadn't even seen the race. I just seen the last two furlongs on Twitter. I think I was doing something else, and just thought, what is this thing? And I checked, and it was like four, five, six to one already, and I think it's like seven to four now because it's followed up in the Tollworth. And yeah, Constitutional would be my selection in the Supreme. I've mentioned that before as Tollworth win. There's just something about this horse. His debut really reminds me of Shiskin when Shiskin beat Chafin up Harry. And it's just that turn of thought after the last hurdle. And I just think this could be Nicky Anderson's next superstar. And yeah, I just think that Tollworth win didn't... Okay, the form might not amount to much, but I'm just going to trust my eyes on this one. And Constitutional will be for me at the moment in the Supreme. I've got him in a couple of multiples and a single in my own bets, but... He's too short to be putting up on these videos, but yeah, I, I'm a really big fan of this Constitution Hill. Next, we have Dysart Dynamo, who come out and won the Moscow Flyer. I, I thought this was really impressive. Like I say, I'm a big Constitution Hill man, and I thought it was an absolute certainty. Even when it was just John Bond, Sagar Hard, Constitution Hill talk, and all the three top class horses, but I was thinking I'm more than happy that, um, that to have Constitution Hill and think that he can beat them two horses. And then Dysart Dynamo comes out of almost nowhere because I think most people were thinking he could be more of a Ballymore horse. And I thought that was just a special performance in the Moscow Flyer. Again, I don't think he beat much, but I just thought he just broke them all from halfway. And it looks like that typical Willie Mullins supreme horse. And he has got me a little bit scared, but I still fancy Constitution Hill. But I do think Dysart Dynamo is going to be the biggest danger to him. And then we'll move on to John Bond, the final of, of the horses that have run lately in the Supreme picture. Listen, his last performance at Haydock kind, kind of divided opinions. And I understand both sides because I don't see how you can knock a horse the, um, for winning a race. Like, he didn't look comfortable throughout the race. He was kind of trapped wide. And obviously Haydock, as many people have touched on, is not an e easy track to look impressive on. And he got the job done and he won going away quite easily. So I think it's hard to grab John Bond too much. But then I understand the people who, ha who are kind of giving him a hard time when you compare him to Constitution Hill and Dysart Dynamo. Maybe John Bond Bond's form's got more substance. I don't know, but I do have him back of the pack out of these three horses. I still think he's a great horse, and I think all three of these horses that I've mentioned in the Supreme are top-class horses, along with Sagar Hard, who hopefully we'll see at the Dublin Racing Festival next week. But just for me, I have John Bond back of the pack here. Could be completely wrong. I wouldn't be laying him or nothing like this, but... The order I have these three horses in at the moment would be Constitution Hill, Dysart Dynamo, and John Bum. Of course, wouldn't forget about Sagar Hard if he goes this way. I wouldn't forget about Mighty Potter either. I don't think he's got maybe the same ability as some of these horses, but he does look very raw and he's learning on the job. And he will suit the Supreme coming off a strong pace. And you can't underestimate a good Melia horse. I think he's 12 or 14 to 1 at the moment. I could see him being a gamble on the day. Gordon Elliott wanting to come back for his first Cheltenham Festival after missing last year over the instant what happened, wanting to make a splash. He's going to have Jack Kennedy on him. I think Jack Kennedy rides him over Davy Russell. And for me, Jack Kennedy's the best jockey in National Hunt's racing. And I just would not I would never rule Mighty Potter running out a big race. But for me, it's, it's Constitution Hill in the Supreme at the moment. So moving on to the big one, Shishkin vs. Ergamy in. I, I was shocked this race was so close. It was like, I'm going to copy what everybody else has said. I think this was one of the best races I've ever seen in National Hunt Racing. Um, I just think it was two incredible horses. I've always held Shiskin above an Ergamine. And I actually backed Shiskin to win by five lengths. I thought there was a gap between these two horses. And I was wrong because I know Shiskin made a few mistakes, but he was flat out all out to beat an Ergamine. He did look like he was getting up quite cosily on the line the last 50 yards or so, but... I just think these are two absolute machines and 
if you're in an Ergamian fan, I wouldn't completely lose hope of reversing the form at, Chis- um, at Cheltenham with Shiskin because there's only a length between them. But if you're a Shiskin fan, you're also now thinking you've got the better of an Ergamian, and I am a Shiskin fan, and I do think he'll confirm that form at Cheltenham. I just hope they didn't have too much of a hard race, but it's in the, they're in the prime of their career, the two top class horses. You shouldn't get broke off a race like that, you'd like to think. And I do think these are two of the best horses in training. I actually think Shiskin is the best horse in training. I won't argue with anybody who says it's going to be it's Honeysuckle. Um, that's a fair fair shout, but Honeysuckle gets that £7, and I just think Shiskin, he's not getting no allowances, and he's, he's going to be taking on the best over the fences. And I'm just a massive fan of Shiskin. I just think he's an absolute superstar. It's almost hard to believe when he's coming through, is he going to be the next Altior? Is Nicky Henderson really got another one? So you can't play it down, but it just looks like he has. I just think Shiskin's an absolute machine. And I can't wait for the rematch at Cheltenham. So, moving on to Alaho. So, yeah, Alaho, he came out and won at Thales. Um, Fakazuza, he's made a big mistake, kind of. At the start, I thought, OK, is Alaho going to have an easy task now? But I think he would have had an easy task anyway. It's the scary thing is this horse is improving. I've always been a massive fan of him. I backed him in the Albert Bartlett when he lost. Backed him in the Aris. No, I didn't back him in the Aris. Hey, sorry, I backed him for the match that year. Um, but he, he lost there. Got up on him for the, the Ryanair last year. I'm just a massive fan of him, and I backed him for this year's um, Ryanair as soon as he crossed the finish line last year. I just think he's tailor-made for this race. People are saying, talking about the Gold Cup route for him, but he's shown he's not effective at that trip. Maybe he can mature into it in the future, but definitely this season it's going to be all about the Ryanair. I don't see what beats him. because he's, I don't want to jinx it, but he doesn't look like a horse who's going to fall either. He's just got so much scope. I hope he doesn't get injured like half of the other horses in the Willie Mullen stable seem to do, which I'll move on to later. But at the moment, I think I've put two points up on Alaho 9-2 in my first ever video, and um, I'm kind of banking on him now to get most of my points because... I was looking at me, me, me bets a couple of weeks ago, and it's only a bit of fun in the description, but I thought if Alaho and Fernie Hollow win, I'm in profit, and they both look like bankers, but Fernie Hollow, we know what's happened now, and um, we'll move on to him next. But this Alaho, I absolutely love him. He's slightly becoming one of my favourite horses in National Hunt training. I just think he's an absolute beast. He's just a huge, magnificent, galloping specimen of a horse, and I just think he's going to take the world of stopping in the Ryan air. I honestly do. I just pray he gets there in one piece. Move on to Fernie Hollow. Like I say, I'm, I'm devastated about this. And to be honest, like, when I seen the news, the first thing I thought about was these videos. So I thought that was getting me most of my points. I don't want my first ever videos to be losing profit at the Shelton Festival. And I had the points on him at 11 to 1, and I think he looks an absolute certainty. But then, again, in my own personal bets, I had him at 37s boosted, and um, I had him in a, a nice double with Bob Ollinger. I had him with Brave Man's Game and Shiskin for almost £5,000 that bet paid. And, just a bit gutted there because he probably was one of my best results for the festival if he was a one, and I think he definitely was a one. Um, he doesn't look like the type of horse that, that will fall. You never know, but just the way he jumped him um, last time I was against Riviera to tell, giving it all that weight and just absolutely smashed it. I, like, I know it wasn't the biggest um, distance in the world, but just given that weight, I just thought he was always holding it. I thought that was a monster performance by Fernie Hollow. I had him down as one of my bankers of the week. I actually had him down as the bank of the banker of all the novice chases out of Bob Ollinger, and Gallop into Shams, blah blah blah. I thought Fernie was the best chance. And I was actually almost going to take sixteen to one for him to win the Arca this year and the champion chase next year on Paddy Power, the double the other week. Luckily I didn't now. Um but you can't rely on this horse now. He's missed the last two Shelton festivals. I hate back on horses coming back from injury, but I thought I played this one right and it's backfired and the two horses I backed was Appreciator and Fernie Hollow at, at great prices through the Arkle, and it looks like none of them are going to go here. So I kind of can't even look at this Arkle market anti post at the moment. It's not going to be sick. It, it looks terrible. I couldn't be taking short prices on Edward Stone or Blue Lord. Like Blue Lord was going to finish 20 lengths behind Appreciator last year. I know he's improved for fences, but Edward Stone was a handicapper. I'm not saying these two horses won't win the Arkle because it looks a weak contest, but. When I can bring myself to look at the anti-post market, I'm going to maybe delve more into the likes of this Hart and Colors. Uh, he comes with a big reputation and he could run a big race maybe at the Dublin Racing Festival next week and I might take a little punt on this horse, but I'm a bit deflated at him looking at that race at the moment. I did think Fairly Hollow was going to win it, but listen, cries about it enough now. That's anti-post better than it's only him and uh, Mon- me Monkfish, 66 to 1 bet. That's kind of went to pot so far off the top of my head. So I can't complain too much. The rest of them look like they're going to get to there in one piece. But listen, there's still 40 odd days to go. I pray they're going to get there in one piece. 
So moving on to just a six here I put up in the first video because I've talked about Fernie Hollow and Alaho that I put up in the first video and we'll move on to Shanty House later. This Trixie, listen, it didn't take a rocket scientist. Bob Ollinger, I think it was four to one at the time. Shishkin, seven to four at the time. Honeysuckle, two to one at the time. I think these are all odds on shots now, so that's going well. Like I say, it didn't take a rocket scientist to pick them, but these are the type of bets I like doing in September because just a bang on obvious horses that could go on off odds on on the day. And the kind of a um, bit of a safety net for me now because I should imagine hopefully at least two of these in this trick are going to win if they get there in one piece. I think Bob Ollinger should be winning that tennis. I think Honey Shuffle should be winning that champion hurdle. But these two horses are Henry de Bromhead and he can't shake off this bad form at the moment. I don't know what's going on with this stable but we'll move on to Bob later and he's, he's still grounded out and won't be Capitano going away the other day. So maybe his class horses will just be able to ride this bad bit of stable form. But we'll just have to wait and see with them too. But then, yeah, we've talked about Shishkin, the last leg of the Trixie. Um, well, the way I've noticed it down, sorry, I know he's on the Wednesday and Bob's on the Thursday. But Shishkin, I fancy him to confirm that form with an ergamine. So that Trixie for me is looking good at the moment. So I'm hoping they all get there in one piece, like I keep repeating. So we'll move on to this Bob Ollinger race. And this was another race that divides the opinion. I was happy with it. Um, it didn't really help all the fences being taken out because we wanted to see him improve his jumping and I would have liked him to have another run between now and Cheltenham. It doesn't look like it's going to be the case. We know this horse has got tons of natural ability. If Gallop de Champs doesn't go this route, um, I'll move on to him later as well. I've got just something I want to add on Gallop de Champs. But if Gallop de Champs doesn't go to this Bob Ollinger route, I think Bob Ollinger, it's his race to lose, personally. Um, my phone's on charge, which, uh, so I can't remember remember exactly who's in the tennis market. But there's that Venetia Williams horse, La Home Press, and then I think a couple of Willie Mullins horses where we don't know if they're going to go for the Arkle, the Marsh, the RSA. So at the moment, I think Bob deserves his place odds on in that market just for the ability he shows as a novice here last season. And hopefully he can have a clean round to jump on and um, notch up another win at the Cheltenham Festival. But yeah, I thought that was an okay performance beating Capadano. We seem to... His trainer talked about Henry de Bromhead having that other gear that horses don't just that other horses just don't have. And he, he went away quite readily. And Capitano, that could be good for him. He looks like he's a big improver for fences. And we'll have to see where Capitano goes next. But yeah, I think that was good for him. You had like Gaylad Dumanil back in third, who for me, he, I thought he was the horse that was overpriced in every market going into this season. He was a dual grade one um, winner last season and a second to Bob Orleans at the Chelsea. To Bob Ollinger at the Cheltenham Festival. Sorry for my speech here. And he was 25 to 1 for the retainers and the Festival Novice Chase or the Marsh and the RSA. I thought that was incredible value. I, I For a horse that's still young and I thought it'd still be improving. I don't even know what to make a game at Zuma nearly. I thought he might come on for the run the first time when he was beat by Capizano. But last time out, he, he cruised into the race almost. I don't think Port Arnold even gave him a whip. And that was it. He just kind of went round on the bridle like... Not, no questions asked that Paul Tarnan must have just not felt like he had the horse underneath him to go with Capizano and Bob Ollinger when they quickened. And yeah, you've got a right gay lad too many a lot for him for the season at this point. Uh, maybe, I don't know where they go with him now. Do they go back over hurdles? He's not interested in the stairs hurdle. Do they just write this season off and see what happens next year? I don't know, but I've been really disappointed by him. I, I thought this was a very classy horse over hurdles last year and I thought he would have had the world at his feet. Um, being so young, going over fences, you know, he could have been running in open age um, Gold Cups and Ryanairs by the age of, of seven or six, maybe seven, still very young. But now he looks like he's um, regressed and I'm really disappointed about Gaylad Zumanil. I've tipped him only 0.5 points for the, the RSA on these videos, I think. So, yeah, he's been a massive disappointment for me. And the last touch on, on Bob Ollinger is, uh, yeah, I'm still happy. I went into Cheltenham, but I would have preferred another run. So we move on to Classical Dream and Champ, who are both disappointed this week in the Stairs Hurdle division. These are still the two horses that I pick going to Cheltenham, just simply because these horses have always been able to throw a, a stinker in here and there. Like the two horses that you need to catch on the right day, but I think these have still got the most ability in that Stairs Hurdle division. I've never been a massive Floor and Porter fan, and I don't think he'll get away with the same thing this year. Forgive me if I'm wrong in the stairs hurdle. I don't think he's going to just get this lead and just make all and just be smooth sailing winner of the, um, the stairs hurdle once again. And then Thyme Hill is definitely the most consistent out of the horses mentioned here. But I don't think he's got the classic classical dream or champ. 
I've backed Classical Dream in this, in these videos. I wouldn't be giving up. I'll be topping back up before the festival if he's, if he's five, six to one. Um, to be honest, I might even, when I finish this video, I was thinking about it the other day, topping back up on him because I haven't got a lot of money on Classical Dream for the stairs hurdle, but I've seen nothing this season that has made me go off and forward the stairs hurdle. So he, he didn't even get a whip by Paul Tarnins in the last race. I think he just must have got awfully tired and Paul Tarnins just saved him. And I've seen Willie Mullins saying, I just draw the line through that and... I do think we'll have him right for Cheltenham with a bit of confidence. So, yeah, I wouldn't be giving up on classical today. It's a wide open division. Whatever you fancy in this, you'd have a chance, surely, because nobody knows what's going to turn up on the day. Like I say, maybe Pine Hill's the most consistent to run his race, but I do think Champ and classical dream have got the most ability in this race, and I might even have a little cover bet on Champ. If he, actually, he's about 5-1 to one now, I think 6-1. to one. I might have a little £20 on him just as a as cover bet in case classical dream just does do something silly on the day. Yeah, I'm still happy with Classical Dream. So Chantry House. So this horse, I love this horse. Like I've mentioned, anyone that knows me, I don't know why I've always loved him since debut. I think he gets a lot of stick, considering he's only been beat three times in 13 races or something like this. Um, I've seen people say he's been well-placed throughout his career, even though he's ran in some of the hardest races out there, like the King George, Cheltenham Festival two times. Um, he's contested um, a couple or maybe three. Um, grade ones, no, three or four grade ones in his life, I think he's contested. So I think this horse gets a lot of, a lot of stick because um, a lot of people like David Jennings even say he's the most overrated horse in Sweden. And I remember Gav Lynch saying he was the lay of the festival for a handicap last year and then he went and won the grade one. So I don't know, I've got a bit of a soft spot for him. But to be honest, when he got beaten to King George, that did not bother me at all. I've always thought he was more of a stayer and I thought that track could be a bit sharp for him and I was willing to draw a line through that run. But I can't draw a line through this run yesterday in the Cotswold Chase um, at the time of recording this video. He just didn't look comfortable for me. And I just think, apparently, they go the same pace as a champion chase. Some of the jockeys say the first circle in the Gold Cup. I don't think Chancey House's jumping's going to hold up. He's had a back surgery last year, but it looks like something's bothering him. He's making crazy shapes over his fences. He doesn't look fluent. He gets in no kind of rhythm. And it was just class that got him through yesterday against two bang average rivals, in my opinion in I right and Santini, he should be beating them. And I just think, listen, he's 14 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Now, the same price I put him up at the start of the year, I can't have him for the Gold Cup. I hope I'm wrong. I love the horse. And if he wins the race, I'll be made up. But I've, I've kind of cast him out at this stage. He's, like I say, people will call this horse overrated and say he's never been classy. But you won't find a bigger chance he was fan than me. And I just think there's something wrong with him this year. He just doesn't look the same horse. Like, He's never been maybe the most fluent jumper. But I thought that was when he was getting swept off his feet in the marsh. He was just under a bit of pressure. But even at three miles plus this year, his jumping just hasn't held up. And he looks like a horse with a problem for me. Nicky, uh, Nicky, Anderson, Nicky Anderson. Nico de Boyneville dismounted him straight away. Said he was a very tired horse. And maybe there's a problem that's going to come to light. He has a very hard race there. And will he even bounce back in time to be competitive at Cheltenham? I don't know, but... It's only 40 days away. It looks like it was a grueler of a race. And even if he does turn up fresh with the Gold Cup, I'd be surprised if this horse runs the race I was expecting him to. I just think this season, no. I wouldn't be backing him anyway if you'd ask me now. Unfortunately, because I love the horse. So moving on to two more horses I put up in these videos. Classic Getaway and Take T. I can't remember if Classic Getaway ran since I've done the last video or before. So I'm going to just touch on his, on his previous run. In case I already, forgive me if I've already touched on this in a previous video, but classic getaway. So, okay, he got beat by Cashback. He went on favourite um, against his elders. His elders on his first ever run over hurdles on bottomless ground. He ran key and he pulled Paul Tarnan's arms out. He still looked like he was going to win two out. Then kind of just emptied and Cashback just went and beat him quite readily. Um, I was willing to draw the line through that race because, like I say, it's against his elders, against a um, proven grade one chaser, Cashback. Of course, this is over hurdles, but um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be so so hard on classic getaway. Yeah, I think he's still a horse that that's obviously going to be learning. It was his first run over hurdles. He cost a lot of money. Um, I thought it might have just been me being hopeful because I've invested quite a lot into classic getaway for the um, for the festival, especially the Ballymore. Even though I thought he could go for the Bartlett, every time I looked at this Ballymore, I kept on thinking, surely there's a horse here that's going to drop back into this and just storm to the top of the market because. It's just so wide open the Ballymore. And 
I kept on having like little bets, topping up on him, topping up on him. Before he got beat first time out, and I've even went back in since he's been beat first time out because all the right type of judges out there, like and the professional next jockeys, are saying you can't be too hard on this horse. Like a Barry Geraghty, Ruby Walsh. Say, um, I think it was Ruby Walsh also. And I just think you know what? Maybe it's not just my wishful thinking because of back this horse, and maybe he can just draw the line through this this race. He's back out tomorrow, and it looks like a really winnable race, so it's make or break tomorrow. Um, hopefully he shows a bit of pace so he doesn't look like a Bartlett horse. And yeah, you'd like to see him get the job done tomorrow. Um, like I say, he costs a lot of money, he's chiefly parked, he likes runners at the festival. Um, yeah, like I say, hopefully he can be the horse to storm to the top of this Ballymore market. I'm not giving up on him just yet anyway. I backed him for the Bartlett also in these videos, so I'm covered either way, but me personally, I'd rather than go for the Ballymore. Because that Bartlett, the, the other Bartlett's looking really hot. Okay, so we've got Take the Out tomorrow, another horse I've put up in these videos, and I haven't got a strong opinion on this horse, it's just Take Tea and Brandy Love with the two standout Mullins or horses last year from the bumpers that I took a liking to. I know Grangey beat them both, I think, at the Dublin Racing Festival, but I like Take Tea and Brandy Love, so I'll put them both up, just speculative 0.5 points. They ran in the same race first time out, and Brandy Love absolutely battered Take Tea, but maybe Take Tea. Um, has more improvements in it. Who knows? Maybe she um, hadn't had as much work as Brandy Love at that time. I don't know. And take tea. She'll listen. We'll see how she gets on tomorrow. But Willie Mullins looks like he's got an absolute army of, of mares on his head list this year with, with Brandy Love, Dino Blue, Allegory Devassi. So maybe she won't carve away into that picture. But I'm interested to see how she gets on tomorrow because, yeah, I liked it as a, as a bumper horse and then mares bumpers. Moving on to Brandy Love then. So yeah, like I say, this is another horse I liked in the bumpers last year for Willie Mullins. She couldn't have been more impressive over two miles on her debut this season, beating Take Tea and a couple more horses. That run had had a couple of form boosts, and I was intrigued to see her in the Sol Arena two days ago, or was it yesterday? It was yesterday, I think, um, for me as I'm recording this video. It's a, it's a tricky one when they run in the Sol Arena, because you want your horse to run well, but you don't want them to get that £5 penalty. And I think this was almost... The perfect scenario for Brandy Love back as life me. And I, I've only got 0.5 points on it in these videos, but I, I, I am actually quite invested in it in my own bets. I've got it in quite a lot of multiples because I th thought she's good value. Um, not only at 25 to 1 at the start of the season, but even after the debut at 8 to 1. I've seen a video go on off topic a little bit before the Energy Mean vs. Shisken class. And if anyone wants to see this video, just uh, message me on Twitter, S Racing, or uh, message me in the comments here, and I'll try and um, get hold of the link for you. And it was before Shiskin versus Energamine, and he's talking about Energamine, Paul Town, and saying it's one of my favourite horses in the yard, he'll take your eye out, he's amazing. And the person who was interviewing Paul Town just said, can you give me one, one other horse who maybe takes your eye out in, in, in the yard? And it was a bit of a random answer, you'd be expecting like maybe a proven grade one horse. But he said Brandy Love, he said I absolutely love this horse, I think she's going to go to the very top. And I just thought that was telling. Uh, this horse, she's a big beast of a horse. She reminds me of a little bit like Lorena. I'd be open she could put the same performance in as Lorena at the Cheltenham Festival anyway. Um, and then maybe go on to fulfil more of her potential than Lorena did. Don't know what's wrong with my speech today. But yeah, no, I just think this Brandy Love, she almost ran the perfect trial for backers like myself. Because I thought she, I thought she went from Gallop in front. I don't know what the sectionals say, but she looked like a big, powerful traveller. Like... Almost a la whole esque over hurdle, it's just a big beast just flying out in front. But she jumped left at every hurdle, which will bode well for Cheltenham. And the first thing you do think is, thank God Cheltenham's left handed. But the more I watch the, the race back, I think, okay, left handed will suit her, but she does look a bit of a nutcase. I'd like her to just calm down, get a bit of heads on her shoulders, because it was like a stadium for lunge esque. How, uh, how, how left she was jumping, I know a stadium for lunge jumped right over hurdles, but you know what I'm getting at, the same thing. I'd just like her to be a bit more professional, but it is going left-handed at Cheltenham, and I'm more than happy with my Brandy Love bets. Um, I think she was definitely shaped like the best horse in the race, and yeah, I, I fancy her to reverse the form with Allegori Devassi if she's going, going the other way around and receiving five pounds, so I'm more than happy. I think Dino Blue is the biggest threat to, um, to Brandy Love at this stage, but yeah, we'll see where she goes next. She probably stays at Cheltenham now. Um, moving on to the Pied Piper yesterday, well, this was outstanding. I mentioned in a previous video when I put Vauban up, I actually was toying on putting Pied Piper and Vauban up for the triumph. But then I thought, I've already put Phil Zor up and I don't want to just 
Um, but even though I bet like this in my own personal bets, I didn't want to start getting too silly on the videos. I, uh, because they were both 16 to 1 at the time, four band and Pied Piper, I think. Maybe four band 25 to 1 when I put, up, put them up in this video. But anyway, this Pied Piper, I thought this was absolutely sensational. Like, I, haven't, I don't know what the sectionals are saying or nothing like this again, but you just got to go with your eyes on this. I just thought this was absolutely stunning. And I think this is just a waste to put this horse in the Supreme. If I was these Caldwell construction owners, why not just put Pied Piper and Fildor both in the Triumph and give yourself every chance of winning it? Because we know these four-year-olds don't have a good record in the Supreme, and this Supreme, more than ever, is red hot. I just wouldn't waste this horse in a Supreme. I actually thought I was being quite shrewd there. Well, not shrewd, just absolutely pathetic looking back now. And I back Pied Piper for the Boodles, thinking that, you know, they might try and um, win this off, off top weight. This was before he bolted up yesterday, of course it was, because they have the, the same owners after Freedom for the Triumph, but this Pied Piper won't be going no Boodles now, so that's a waste of my money. And I think he'll take an awful lot, lot of stopping in the triumph. It's actually interesting that Gordon Elliott says that Phil Zor is a better horse than Pied Piper because I know he's probably got more substance to his form, but I'd have Pied Piper out the two at this stage. I've actually put Phil Zor up, like I said, in these videos and Vauban, if that's how you pronounce him. And this Vauban form is looking really good at Pied Piper now because I thought Vauban was unlucky not to beat Pied Piper last time out. But Gordon Elliott has since said that Pied Piper will, would come on enormously for the run that day. So maybe Pied Piper is just a better horse. But I think Vauban's into 6-1 to one now without running. And he's entered at the Dublin Racing Festival next week. I've put him up at 25-1 to one in these videos, which, listen, that'll put me in profit. Just like that one winner alone, just in these videos. Um, so yeah, I'd love Vauban to um, come on also for that, fit, for that run. Win at the Dublin Racing Festival and hopefully reverse this form in the triumph. I think I actually said... During um, when I put Vauban up in the last video, Vauban looked like he was eating the ground back up after the last. He had to switch. He looks like more of a stay than Pied Piper. And Gordon Elliott has backed that up for me, saying Pied Piper is more of a speedier horse and may suit the old course. This is why they'll toy him with the idea of the Supreme. Listen, I think that was on the new course the other day, wasn't it? When Pied Piper bolted up. So I don't think that's the course is going to be any excuse, but it is nice to hear he is more of a speed horse. And Vauban, to me, looks more of a stayer. So. I'd be hoping Vauban can wear both Fildor and Pied Piper um, down up that hill in March for me. But we'll talk more about Vauban next week after we see what he's chatting at the Dublin Racing Festival. I think he's favoured for that race, which I found telling against Fildor, but maybe that's because Fildor is not going. Um, so the Dublin Racing Festival, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, because you'd surely think Fildor would be favoured above Vauban for that um, my Frank Juvenile hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. And just an interesting point, if Phil Dord does go straight to the Cheltenham Festival, I'm sure there's some crazy stat where there's not been a Triumph Hurdle winner that hasn't raced the same year as the as the Triumph and won. Yeah, sorry, I just started to locate that, that stat, but I can't find it, so but I'm definitely not making it up. I just can't remember the exact stat, whether it's in the history of the Triumph or the last five years. I don't know, but um, everybody was telling me last year about Zanny here, like, this stat went against him because he went straight from December to the Cheltenham Festival. And apparently, all of the winners of the Triumph Hurdle have ran in the same year as the Triumph. So January or February, a couple of months previous to the race, apparently. Basically, yeah. Um, if I can find it, I'll mention it in the next video. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a negative to go straight from December to the Triumph. So if Phil Zord does do exactly the same as Zanna here, it could be a negative. But thankfully, it doesn't look like Vauban's doing that as well. And I've got the both of them. On my team in these videos so fingers crossed and um, one of them can do the business for me in march so if we move on now to tiger holes being out and listen and uh, make what you want to that run it wasn't impressive i don't think it was anything impressive but i don't think it was nothing to disheartening either like i said and when i put them up if it's good grounds i think this horse just wins at cheltenham i personally do and um, the last two times it's been good grounds i think at the cheltenham festival in the cross country is won by a combined you name it, I think it's 50 plus lengths. So, if it's good grounds on the day, 6 to 1 for Tiger Rolls, incredible value, in my opinion. And if he's just got that year too old now and he loses, well, fair enough, just retire him and I'll never lose money on him again because he'll be retired. So, yeah, I'm willing to give Tiger Roll another chance this year because, like I, like I said, when I put him up, I always back him for the Cheltenham Festival. I just think he's different gravy over those cross country um, obstacles. I put Jerry Colombo for the Ballymore in these videos. Again, just speculative because I'm just trying to guess 
which horse was price cut considered in this Ballymore market. As I'm 0.5 on Classic Getaway, like I touched on, and 0.5 on Jerry Cologne. I'd say this is a bet that went down the bin. He looks every inch of all a horse. I wasn't that impressed with him last time out there um, initially. But then you hear people saying it's quite a tight, tra- tight track bales. And um, he's still quite an experienced Gordon Elliott was saying. And he's still unbeaten and he got the job done. He was respond- responding all the time when Jack Kennedy was asking him to like um, stay in touch with the leaders. And then, like I say, he was got one away at the finish. And he's still only young. I think he's only a six-year-old. Like I say, he's unbeaten. He's still improving. He's only run five times. But well, forgive me if I'm mistaken, I don't think he's ever had a greater company, which would be a worry. And yeah, he looks like he looks like a more of a long term project for Jason. But I do think he'll go to Bartlett this year. It's gonna be interesting to see what Gordon Elliott does with Ginso, Hollow Games, Jerry Colum, Manella Kuna. Um maybe they might all go to Bartlett. He's never won it, and maybe he might just go gung ho and throw them all in there. What looks like the right race for them all. It'll be interesting, but I don't think Jerry Colum's going to know Barry more, and I don't think he's winning. A Ballymore if he does go there. And yeah, just to finish on, I think I was going to put the play the getaway up um, to win any race in these videos. I backed him the other, um, the other day, 20 to 1 to win any race because he's been a bit of a disappointment so far. He got beaten his bumper and he got beaten his first two runs over hurdles when he didn't really finish his race healthy at the time. Um, and, and yeah, so he, he went and bolted up. In a weak enough looking race um, a couple of days ago, I think it was during this week, and it looked like um, the jigsaw pieces are kind of finally being put together and he won quite readily. This horse has always been held in high regard. I think I heard David Casey saying he works. He would either work with Sir Gerhard and Kilcrews last year or Fanny Hollow and appreciated the year before. Like He works with the best of the horses in the yards, if I recall. He's always come with a big reputation. If I recall, his point appointment was, was just absolutely fantastic. I actually thought he looked just more like a three-mile type of horse, um, but he must be showing more gears at home for them to keep on running them over two miles, or are they just trying to get him handicapped for something um, like the Martin Pipe? Because he could have like a stone up his sleeve, this this horse. Just when you hear about his work, I, I think even Willie Mullins said in the stable tour at the start of the year, his work is absolutely outstanding. He just needs to get him to produce it, but it's all about fences with, with this horse. Like I say, I've backed this horse any race. I don't know whether he'll go for the county or will he be this year's gallop on to Champs and go and balls up in the Martin Pipe. I don't know. Um, I actually can't find any race price for him anymore. I just looked before I started this video because he was going to be my bet in um, 1.20 to 1 to deploy the getaway any race. Um, unfortunately, I can't find them, them prices anymore. But if any of you are curious, um, I've backed him. So I just think this could be that Willie Mullins horse that gallop on to Champs last year that just goes in absolutely hacks up when it gets up and slip in the Martin Pipe and yeah I think everything I've ever heard about this horse points towards him being an absolute maybe not a superstar but yeah uh, the sky's the limit I've always heard for this horse and just with the clicking for him last time I was over, fence, um, over hurdles maybe now the penny's dropped and like I say he could have a, a lot of weight up his sleeve and go and absolutely balls up gallop on to champ style and yeah also Remilius today looked like he was coming to win the race against that nice guy or my nice guy and the big short, and he made an absolute hash of the last. He nearly fell over. I don't know how he did, how he stayed on his feet. But Remilly is always another one, that, another bumper horse that come with a big reputation. Um, kind of started flopping towards the end of last season. But yeah, he's been off for a long time, and I thought that was more than encouraging performance today by Remilly. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. Behind that nice guy, or my nice guy, a stable mate of his that Paul Tarnan was on. And this Remilly could be another horse that they could get handicapped for a Martin Pipe or something like this. And even Kilcruz, Kilcruz, as they all kill Cruz, um, he's out again tomorrow. And if he gets beat again, he could end up ridiculously well handicapped. But similar to Shanty House, there looks like there's something up with this horse for me this year. He's just not the same horse. But yeah, it's take your pick out of which Willie Mullins horse could end up just being ridiculously well handicapped. Deploy the getaway is the one I've got my money on. Um, like I'm sure you may have noticed, I haven't put any handicap bets up in the description of these videos because I'm absolutely terrible at handicaps. Um, so yeah, I try and stay away from them, but just to go through my handicap book at the moment, I've backed deploy the getaway any race twenty to one, um, remaster for the ultimate sixteen to one, um, El Fabiolo for the county hurdle sixteen to one. I have no idea if he's going there, and Chemical Energy for the Martin Pipe sixteen to one. That's my book at the moment for the handicaps, just small bets. But I might even have a go with this Remilies. Um, I see what happens. I'll see if he's entered anytime soon. 
he might have even injured himself after the last of the day. It was a very awkward looking, like jumpy kind of look like his legs went everywhere and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll wrap this video up now. I'll just sort of skim through what's happened over January, but as always, we're looking half an hour here already. Um, the video is always drag on, unfortunately, but it does have a lot to cover. Next week, I think, out of my horses, the only ones I've got that are running are Hollow Games and Warman. Listen, hopefully they can both win. Um, if Hollow Games wins the Nathaniel Lacey 2 mile 6 hurdle, he put himself right to um, top of the ring in that Albert Bartlett bet, and I've put him up at 33 to 1 in these videos. I think he's 6s or 7s now. It'd be nice to see him go and win at the Dublin Racing Festival. And of course, Warman, if he can go and win and he can go and win stylishly, then that 25 to 1 could be great value going into the Shelton Festival. Um, so yeah, basically that's all from me. I'm looking forward to the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, a lot of questions to be answered. And um, well, I'm going to let Enzo bounce back who I think has been absolutely terrible this season. I hope he does. I've got a lot of affection for the horse. And I'd, be, I'd love it if he could go and win the Irish Gold Cup. And yeah, we'll touch more on, on the races after they're being run. Next week, hopefully Henry's starters can get back in form. Honey Suckle, I should imagine, will be rocking up for the third Irish champion hurdle. And just to touch on Calipons of Champs, um, like I say, this horse blew me away like it blew everyone away oh, on Chase debut. Um, at Leopardstown over Christmas, if I believe it was, was definitely Leopardstown, yeah. But just how the dust settles on this, all I'm hearing is Galapante Champs will absolutely smoke Bob Ollinger if it drops back and trip. And then if it goes to three miles, it'll absolutely smoke Brave Man's Game. These are two top horses, Brave Man's Game and Bob Ollinger. And listen, I was initially just to say from a Galapante Champs, and I'm a big fan of his. Um, I was actually a big backer of Galapante Champs last year. I had him, I actually got quite lucky. I backed him 28 to 1 any race, thinking he'd go for the county. And he went for the Martin Pipe and he bolted up. I actually backed him out of 100 to 1 in the Dublin Racing Festival, a small bet, because I always remember him coming home from Fra over from France with kind of reputation. And I'm sure he started the same race as Duban started. And I just always followed his career. And I do like Galapante Champs. But is he being overhyped just for this one chase debut run? I, I think he may be. I'm not, like, listen, I'm not saying he's not going to be a superstar, but he's six and seven thrown for the Gold Cup next year already. He's only jumped the fence once. Listen, I'd love to be one of them on at bigger prices, 33 to 1 for next year's Gold Cup, things like that. But it's all it's almost like this horse is already like the next the next big thing. Um, just off the off the back of one chase debut. And I was absolutely stunned with that chase debut, but I'm not certain that he'll just go and win any race he wants at the Channel Festival. He may do, but I'm I am interested to see him next week. And yeah, I do think he'll win next week, but that's my little rant on Galapan's the champs. I do love him. And I think that's everything. Bit of a shame if I've missed anything because there has been a lot of racing that's went on. But I think I've covered everything of importance in these videos. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get another video up after the Dublin Racing Festival and then I'll try and squeeze another one in in February. And yeah, that, that has basically take me up to the Chapman Festival. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and I hope you've all been good. Bye now. Hello, what's happening? Just a quick little side note at the end of this video. I was just watching it back then to see if I'd made any mad mistakes or forgot about anything. And yeah, I noticed the mic for the last 10 minutes was just making crazy sounds. Um, maybe it was more than the last 10 minutes to use, I'm not sure. But when I listened back then, I could only notice it towards the last part of the video. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what's happening with it. I'll have to get a new one for the next video, so I'm sorry if it made for uncomfortable in viewing or listening. There's actually a problem with the volume on my laptop. This is why I started using these headphones, but they look like they're finished. Um, so, yeah, I'll have to invest in a new pair for the next video, so I'm sorry about that. I um, hope you still enjoyed it anyway. Bye now. One final side note, now I can actually squeeze a bet in at the end of this video. Like I say, a couple of days ago, I backed a ploy to get away to win any race at the Cheltenham Festival uh, at 20 to 1. He no longer exists in this market on Skybet. But I think it's because a lot of the bookies, including Skybet, have since went non running money back on all the races. And yeah, like I said, I would have preferred to back him any race. But seeing as the, the, the bookies have went non running money back, I'll take a little gamble on to play the getaway going for the Martin Pipe because if he doesn't go, I'll get my money back. And his best price, 14 to 1 for this race, non running or bet, of course, on bet 365. And um, like I say, I'm going to do one point on this, 14 to 1. If he doesn't turn up, get the point back, and if he turns up, I'm pretty sure he won't be 14 to 1 on the day, and I'd fancy his chances. And yeah, if you can't get into Bet365, you could back him on Skybet at 12 to 1, and I think they're the only two uh, bookies that haven't priced up for the race, none running money back. But yeah, 
One point on to play the getaway, 14 to 1, bet 365 to win the Martin Pipe, non-runner money back. That's uh, the bet for this video. That's definitely all from me now. Bye.